I'm going to tell you guys how to play every single fucking motherfucker on here, okay? Okay. So, let's start with smoke. What do we got for smoke? What's, what are we thinking about smoke here? Biggest thing for smoke, personally, I think, that isn't really utilized very well, is you can use smokes to cut off angles. This is like the most classic example I can think of is kids uh bomb site on oregon so you like throw a smoke at the trophy door and then you can like swing on the breach or whatever so you can use your smoke to cut off that angle and then you can take engagements but you only have like a 10 second window where you can actually do that of course until the smoke disappears so you can't you like actually have to capitalize on the fact that you're cutting off the angle if that's what you're going for the other thing about smoke actually one, one more thing do the site setups for your team make the rotates make the holes make the make the nitro holes whatever whatever your team needs for holes you make them okay okay mute I think you should use your mutes more often for drones than you should for wall denial. Cade and Bandit, Bandit are just better wall denial in general. Like if you mute a double reinforced wall, so like CC Platt is like the classic one on Clubhouse. If you mute the middle of it, you can straight up just thermite the left or the right, or you can ace the top, you can Habana the top and then throw a nade and get the mute off. You can just Maverick the mute off. Like there's so many, it's so easy to clear a mute off a wall or just straight avoid it like with a repel. That like muting walls isn't ideal unless you're using one mute per panel so if you put one on each panel they can still open the top and nade them off but they can't just like walk up and thermite the side as they like normally be able to prioritize like muting drone holes or muting like single walls like um like the construction wall on on uh, the cc bomb site on club like that's a good wall to mute uh because they can't get the edges of it they can't repel and open the top like that's a good mute and like the drone holes so i think mutes just you should just be using mutes for like drones primarily so if you're struggling with drones like pick me up i freaking love castle man castles really good at holding like powerful areas so you can hold power like really powerful areas with your castles it doesn't even have to be a good castle strategy you can just castle off everything and then use that like negligence from the attackers to take advantage of it. so like say you castle off fucking every window and every door to a room like say there's four doors to a room you castle every door and you sit there okay now if they only open one of your castles you're now you, you're now in this room where you can move around the room freely and only have to worry about the one door right so you kind of take that theory and you can hold like bar on clubhouse you can open the moto hatch you can waste a bunch of time shoot drones you know the attackers are droning it all out and trying to actually figure out what's going on and they're like damn like why are these random castles everywhere Whereas you as the castle player know what's castled, you know what's safe, you know where you can escape to, um, and you can kind of use that against the attackers. If the attackers don't open all your castles, you're going to be in a pretty good spot. I think the biggest thing for Pulse that people don't do is calling everything that you possibly can for your teammates. That includes things that you don't, like where you see nobody. Calling stuff that's safe for your teammates to fall off to is really important as Pulse. So say you're like on the dining site on Villa, which is like a classic site that Pulse will be played on and you're pulsing the master balcony and you see that there's nobody on the master balcony. So then you can tell your roamers upstairs, like, hey, there's nobody master balcony. You guys are safe to like hold the top floor from master. And then your teammates can sit in master, hold those longer angles into like statue and deer and stuff without having to worry about being shot in the back from a guy on the windows. And then after they can just drop the hatch safely. So pulse is like, you're almost like finding those safe routes for your teammates. But at the same time, you can of course just go for like nitros underneath with pulse, which is one of the like most simple ways to use them, but also one of the most effective. Then we got Doc. My tip for Doc is play Thunderbird. Thunderbird's like never banned. <laughs> if you really want heals, just play Thunderbird. She's just way better. Of course, I am going to give you a Doc tip still, just, just in case you're still going to ignore me. As Doc, you like really, he's not that complicated. You heal people if they're low. You heal yourself if you're low. One thing that people don't do a lot though is like heal yourself before engagements. Like overheal yourself. If you know someone's around a corner and you know they're just camping or sitting there or whatever and you want to swing them or you want to make a big play or something, hit the stim, you know, get the extra health. You might as well because you're probably just gonna die anyway but maybe it's maybe it's the difference between life and death rook is pretty straightforward you put your armor down and then you run around so my tip for rook is put down your armor plates as soon as you can you know pick up your armor whatever put it in a place where people can get it obviously like don't like go off on a roam with your armor and then put down midway through the round like that shit is like one of the most annoying things rook players do like if you're gonna pick rook like if you're gonna be useless picking rook like at least like put your armor down you know put down your armor just use your impacts, just impact the rotates, and then just try to kill people, like, straight up. You have a two-time site, maybe go for a spawn peak. Um, you have no utility left, so you dying really is the worst-case scenario. Is you just you lose your life, you know? You're not dying with a nitro. You're not dying with, with three ADSs in your pocket or whatever. Like, you've already used all your stuff. You might as well just try to kill people because that's all that you're really left for at that point. Capcan, oh, my boy, my boy. My, my tip for Capcan is run the black guys because it's beautiful. Uh, my other tip for Capcan is... I've, I've mentioned this a lot before, but 
barricade the doorway after you put a cap can trap on it rip it down it hides it a lot better a kind of a different one for them is if you have your cap can trap somewhere like if you're holding an area outside the site with your cap cans try to play around your cap can traps like try to shoot the drones before they see the traps and then run away so say uh you're on villa and you cap can trap like the the astro astro door from like bathroom you put your cap cans there you play on the stairs you shoot a drone bathroom and then you run away and maybe they join in again and see your cap cans and shoot them but maybe they don't and they just walk through them looking at the stairs waiting for you to peek them and then they run to your cap cans and die so it's a really low risk situation where it's pretty easy to get kills with so low risk high reward easy to do there's my cap can tip first chonka you want like i think it's best to use your um like shamika launcher like earlier in the round like early to mid round rather than using it for like execute or late round because what will happen on an execute is they'll just run through the fire they like attack like attackers won't care they'll just run through they'll just tank it and die um but using it late round or sorry early round is good especially in like smaller areas so like cigar shop on cafe you know make it so they're uncomfortable in that area just it wastes time you might get some damage and Really, it's just that timing that you're throwing off by doing that. Jaeger's just Jaeger. Put your ADSs down. Um, try to use your ADSs in front of utility. So rather than putting it behind a shield, put it in front of the shield. So that way, when they try to clear the shield, they'll hit the ADS. They'll lose a grenade. They'll lose a gun six. They'll lose important stuff. So put it in front of utility. You could even stack all three ADSs on one piece of utility. Just make it even more annoying. Because then the attackers have to throw three things to burn it and then nade it. And that takes so much teamwork that will literally get you fucking to diamond with that philosophy. So stack your ADSs if you want, you know? If they're not nading you out of everywhere, you, you don't really need the ADSs. So stack them on a shield and they can't clear the shield. You hold the shield, you pre-fry the shield, you win. Bandits, honestly, I just think is a worse version of Cade. Um, if attackers are using Maverick, if, if they're bringing Maverick, like just don't play Bandit. It, do, it just really doesn't do much. It wastes no time and you could just pick Cade. Like 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 if you're putting Bandits down, Mav will just, Mav will just shoot them off, right? You just Mav the bottom of the wall, you shoot the shoot the bands off does nothing if you cade the wall at least they they have to maverick the whole wall they have to make it soft because they can't like just find the cade and shoot it off with 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 the mav if you play bandit for the mp7 try just playing like thunderbird try playing thunderbird because the spear is op so if you're just picking bandit for the mp7 play some thunderbird run the spear you get health boost uh you're probably being a lot more useful for your team if you're if you're picking them just for the gun because there are arguably better guns like the spear and uh thunderbird is the exact same thing you just throw it down good to go my tip for frost is that you can put mats on staircases and they're really strong so when people are coming up a staircase they're looking up the stairs ready for somebody to be like looking down at them right so most of the time people walk up the platforms backwards so if you're on a top floor site and there's staircases to the site people could walk up the staircases to get to the site right it's different when you're downstairs because they're coming down the stairs and they're going to see it but if they're coming up the stairs, the frost mats on the platforms can be really, really strong. This is really good on like uh, the red staircase on Villa. So like the 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 the, the red staircase, um, or like cafe staircases. They're also really good. So frost, good on staircases. Um, pretty underrated. Frost is good. Also under windows, of course. Like frost mats under windows are obviously good. For Valk, my tip would be that nitro traps with Valk are super, super strong. Like super OP. If they are not finding your Valcams and you are not getting like a nitro kill every round, you are just like trolling the fact that you have Valk available. You can just pre-play. You can do this. You don't even need help for this. You put a put a camera down, pre-place the nitro. You see them walking through. You get off the cam. You blow the nitro like that easy. Or you set up a cam somewhere. You see that they're standing still. You ping it. You get off the cam. You nitro them. Like Valk is ridiculously easy to get nitro kills with, and like just just do it. Just do it, man. Next up, we got Cav, and uh, I'm not going to hate on Cav in this video. I'm not going to hate on Cav in this video. My tip for Cav is to find a really good hiding spot, okay? Find a really good hiding spot on the map, somewhere that you think that will, you will never get drowned. And then you wait, and then you wait a little more, and you wait a little more. You don't move. You don't move with Cav. You don't pick new spots every fucking 10 seconds. You set the mouse down, you set the controller down, and you wait like a minute and a half, two minutes. Just wait a bit, dude settle down and then when your team is getting <laughs> on site they're going for plants you're hearing the smokes you're hearing the yings you're hearing gun sh shots non-stop the shit is going down that's when you flank okay because then you come in with a beautiful beautiful quad flank kill the comms are going crazy everything's hectic at that point so that's when you want to flank with cav that's when you want to hit the flank and that's how you should play cav because just running around with cav like you're probably just gonna get gunned down by 
literally anybody in the game who has a better weapon, which is everybody in the game. That's why I think you should play Cap. Unless you know someone's, like, isolated. If you know someone's isolated, you got a cam on them or something, like, and they're like, go get this, dude, then maybe that's the play. I don't know. I think this one's actually really important because a lot of people, since Echo came out even, like, everybody has used the Echo cams to deny the plant. That's what everybody thinks when they see Echo. They're like, okay, I have the cams. I can deny the plant. But I, in my opinion, in ranked, at least, not in comp necessarily, but in ranked, how often are you actually, like, getting to the point where you're stopping the plant with the Echo and winning on time? Like, never. Like, maybe 1% of the time. Maybe in, like, champ, it's, like, 5 to 5% of the time. Like, but every, every other rank, I know for sure it's under 1%. Like, that's never happening. So instead of using the yokais for the plant, use them for info. Use them for info. It's going to be much more effective. Like, just round around basis, you're going to have more info every round. Um, and that's going to be super vi valuable to your team. So, like, use your echoes for info. Like, like the bank lobby one. Like, I put this one on TikTok. You throw the echo cam on the pillar. You have all of lobby info. He's basically just, like, another Valkyrie. So Valk's banned. Echo can be super strong. You can use a teammate to pre-place a nitro. Um, you can drone a teammate around if they're going to listen to you. You can say, hey, there's one right here. You can hop your Echo cam, Echo him. Your teammate swings. That guy's fucked. Like, Echo drones are really, really strong. But if you're waiting to the plant and you're in a 1v5 and you can't actually waste enough time to, like, win the round, it's kind of useless, you know? Next up, we got Mira. You're going to want to place your Mira, Miras in high traffic areas. This isn't a Mira video, so I'm not going to show you all the best spots or anything. But for the most part, it's high traffic areas where typically the attackers would come through it maybe in gold they're they're all coming through a weird ass spot that they don't come through in champ put your mirrors there you know it's okay to not use the this is where the mirrors go video it's okay like put a mirror where enemies are coming from if you really want you could pocket a mirror and put it down after you know where they're pushing from but besides that you could actually use the mirrors to hold like above the site using the mirror windows so you could put them above the site and then use your shotgun to open up holes holes above so you can watch like the entrances into site uh you can watch for like the plant on the site so you can use mirrors to hold really important areas that can actually be win conditions that can actually be win conditions for your team so like reading bombsite on cafe put your mirror on cocktail and freezer facing piano get a teammate up there to watch the other one you can make a hole above the reading door if they try to come into reading for pillars you shoot them in the top of the head we got legion legion's cool legion's good you know, Legion's decent. Legion is really good off for solo queuing because it gives you info on lots of stuff, right? So if your teammates are not calming or have terrible calls or whatever, he's a good way to have tons of info all on your own with his goo mines, right? So what you can do is use your goo mines on like a backside, so like hallways, staircases behind you. That way you can focus straight on with people who are coming, going to come in front of you. And you know, if they never come, they never come. You can just rotate back site. Um, but that way you'll know if somebody's coming up behind you and then you can turn around and fight that guy. That way you only have to watch like one angle at a time and you're not constantly be exposed, but like shot in the back or whatever. Ella is really good for entrances into the site. So it's information for when the attackers are actually finally pushing in to actually try and take the site to plant the bomb or to kill you or whatever. Uh, what comes to mind for me is like Oregon basement. She's really good because you can put an Ella mine on the entrance in from laundry the entrance in from bunker and the back stairs so you know if someone pushes down the stairs and you actually have to fight them you know if they push into bunker you can swing them or if they push into laundry like if they're doing like a front push then that's your cue to like swing they're in the middle of the open they're completely exposed then so the yellow mines are really really good information and they are super loud they mess up the attackers like really strong of course you can always bust out the yellow shotgun if you're having a rough time vigil is uh you know he's pretty hot g2 skin kind of fresh when you are using his scanner don't move at all don't move your crosshair don't move your body make zero noise because basically what's going to go go down is they're droning you they see the vigil scanners you could be on the floor above you could be on the floor below you could be in the same fucking room for all for all that they know um but the audio of you moving is going to give away where you're at so the the scanner is basically just pointless if you are making noise so a lot of time what i'll do is i'll just sit in a corner and wait they might just drive the drone all the way through the room i was sitting in. i just sit on my scanner the whole time and then i sit there in the corner i still don't move and then i wait for them to run to the room and i shoot them in the side of the head because they just don't know i'm there because they just did a shitty job then we got the boy maestro use the bubbles to shock drones so if you're on site and you're maestro so you're on site alone right a good attacking team a good team because ideally you know, we're all trying to get better. We're all trying to be like the top rank, whatever. So good teams, if they see you're on site alone with their drones, they'll be like, oh, just rush the site. There's only one guy. Like we could, we could fucking smoke this guy. Right. But if you're on your cameras on site, you know, flipping between your two bubbles, one's on each site, maybe 
and you shock all the drones, they're gonna not gonna know exactly what utility you have. They're not gonna know if you're alone or exactly what they're looking at. So it'll leave a little more confusion to the attackers. Cause I think that's something that's underused, even like competitive, like a lot of challenger league teams when I was playing at least. Um, a lot of challenger league teams didn't do that, but that is something that like good maestro players will do. They will make sure that you get zero info on the site because they are on those cameras zapping drones. Alibi, this is a pretty simple one, but putting her prismas under windows that attackers can't repel is going to make it really, really difficult for attackers to go in there. So basically, if they can't repel it, they can't shoot the base of the Prisma, meaning they have to either waste an impact grenade or some sort of explosive to clear that or a twitch drone, whatever. Um, so they're much harder to clear that way because they can't just be shot by any attacker. And if they don't clear it, they hop in, you get the information, they get pinged, whatever. So that, so it's, it's, it's a sacrifice the attackers have to decide on by putting them under windows that they can't repel. If you play Clash, you're probably you're probably gold. You're probably gold. For Clash, if you are going to play Clash, try to keep your distance and have a planned like fall off route. So what a lot of people will do as Clash is just be caught up shocking someone and back up into the middle of the open and get shot by a by like three people on windows repelling or something. As Clash, you want to you want to have a safe route back. So like Clash on Oregon's basement. If you play the top of the freezer stairs, you can fall all the way back through freezer and there's no cutoff spots besides the hatch, which is probably reinforced. So if they open that hatch, you want to leave sooner. Having like safe routes to fall back to is really good. Or if you're playing like elbow as Clash, you can shock them outside the bunker door. You know that you can't get shot in the back really. And then you can fall off back through elbow safely because there's no cutoff spots. The trick to playing Cade is placing your Cade Claws in areas that, one, Cali can't get. So Cade is, is a direct counter to Cali because you can put them in spots where Cali just can't get them, which people are always like, oh, Cali, Cali's, Cali's going to get the Cades. But no, Cali doesn't get the Cades if, if you're playing a good player. So place them in areas like on ceilings or like a bit back from the wall. I don't think, I don't think you can put them on floors. But you can do like invincible ones like on opposite sides, like beside one on each side of the wall. So areas that Cali can't get them. And Cade tricking is also super underrated. Putting a Cade on the wall, saving your second one. When they destroy the Cade, you throw your you throw your other one down as they're like throwing her body or whatever. And then you're getting that utility, you pick it back up again, you do the same thing. My tip for Mozzie is kind of weird. I don't know. Some people probably disagree with this, but as Mozzie, what I like to do is shoot the drones in prep phase. Don't try to hack the drones in prep phase. Shoot as many drones as you can in prep phase. So what this does, like say you shoot three drones in prep phase as Mozzie, right? You then still have three pests. So you have the potential to get six drones by just shooting the three, right? Or like destroy six drones, sorry, because hacking them is also destroying them at the same time. So that's six drones you could potentially be getting rid of from the attackers, making it much, much harder for them. So if you just shoot all your drones, you get three drones right at the start, then great. But like the attackers still have seven drones to re-clear the map. But you can almost use them as mute jammers where it's like they can't drone through this story, they can't drone through this drone hole, they can't drone through here, and they have limited drones already. So it, it just makes it the info game from the attackers so much weaker by shooting the drones in prep phase instead of trying to hack them in prep phase. Warren doesn't deserve the hate he gets. His, his, his loadout's good. He's got a nitro or shield, MPX, SMG-12. Like, he's kind of loaded. He's kind of stacked. For Warden, I would just say play your life in power positions. Hold that power position with your life. Really, if you're in a power position as Warden, they can't flashbang you out of that spot. Really, their only option is to grenade you out of that spot, right? So you want to force the attackers to organize themselves enough to grenade you out of that power position, which probably won't happen in the rank you're at unless they just are luckily the guy that has the grenades at that time. You can even hear the pin, run away, go back, et cetera, et cetera. But like Warden, just play the power position with your life. And yeah, you're, you're good against flashes if they try to flash and push you, you know, like you're just going to fuck them up. Putting Goyo on barricades is super strong because what will happen is the attackers will punch down the barricade the goyo will break and then they can't actually push through that door for another 20 seconds it also does a little bit of damage to them um it's really sick you can also do it on castles so that way once they do open the castle you have that 20 seconds the 20 second goyo flame to kind of figure out if you want to peek that guy if you want to give it up um it gives you a lot of time to work with to actually like make decisions so castle on barricades or sorry goyo on barricades goyo on castles are, are really Oh, like, honestly, like, I think a little bit OP. A little bit OP, low-key. For Wamai, just use your disc to protect utility. Um, you could even throw, like, two or three discs to protect a shield, and then you can use, like, the last one to, like, protect you from a grenade or whatever. But, you again, same thing as, like, the Jaeger thing. Just try to protect utility, keep that utility alive. 
that's pretty much all you can really do with Wumai. With Oryx, my tip would be to open up the hatches in prep phase. So by opening up the hatches in prep phase, if you're going for that flank up a hatch later in the round, you don't have to shoot open first. You don't have to make all that noise. Because if they hear a hatch get shot open, they know that you have an Oryx, they're probably going to watch the hatch and shoot you in the face. So if you open them in prep phase, they then don't know if you're going to flank up Take Coastline, for example. They don't know if you're going to flank up the, the aqua hatch, the luggage hatch, the penthouse hatch, the hookah hatch, because they're all open already, right? So you could hit any of the four, maybe get lucky, they're not watching the flank, you go fucking crazy, and you kill everybody upstairs. As Malusi, you would want to try to place your Malusis like tucked around doorways. So by tucking in around the doorway, if an attacker pushes into the doorway, they don't have to turn around to shoot that Malusi if they haven't like grenaded already. But I mean, if they're smart, they'll just grenade it. They'll clear it way ahead of time. A lot of people don't clear utility in this game. So tucking it around the doorway makes it so it's much harder to like spin around and shoot it. Because if you're pushing into a, into sight and the, the Malusi Wub is behind you, you either have to walk through the whole site slow or walk through the whole entrance slow um, and get swung and you're really vulnerable. Or you're spinning around to shoot it and spinning back around to take the gunfight, which is just like another easy way to die. So tucking them around doorways is really strong. A Rooney... Use your gates to protect utility as well. So like in front of a shield um, or you can gate off like windows where there's no drone holes around. Like the big window in Oregon is a really prime example of that. So that way if someone comes to the big window, uh, say they don't have flashbangs, you know, say they're, they're Ash or they're Sledge or they're um, Finca, right? They have to either use a piece of like good utility, which is a Gon 6, a grenade, an Ash charge, just to burn the gate if they want a drone, or they're going in without any info on that. And maybe they don't have utility at that point. Maybe they're 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 stuck with a gate and they can't get any info. So gates on windows are, can be really strong against against uh, information. Thunderbird's pretty straightforward. You throw this Kona station down, you run around and try to shoot people, right? You can also reset the Kona stations by picking them up and placing them down again. So if you're really in a rush and you need that heal, pick up the station, throw it down. It takes a lot less time to recharge. Good way to kind of cheat the system. My other tip for her is if you want your gun to sound like a paintball gun, run the suppressed on the spear. It sounds beautiful. As Thorn, I would just say play near your traps. Her traps alone are pretty useless. The attackers can just shoot them run away from them uh, they take a little bit to deploy so playing near your traps allows you to swing off them while the attackers are running away from them or whether the attackers look over to shoot it um so playing near them just just makes the most sense it's just a good way to play her azami newest stop absolutely beautiful so much fun so much fun so many different ways to play her um i actually just uploaded a full azami guide on youtube if you guys want every azami tip i have in the inventory but for a quick one right now uh use your gadgets on retakes so you can block off lines of sight on a retake uh, you can cover yourself while you're defusing the bomb. You can cut off the line of sight the attackers are using to to stop you from defusing the bomb. Um, so using her on retakes, super cool, super like super just different from operators. It's, it's she's a lot of fun. Having some just extra Kima barriers in the pocket can really come in clutch. Brother, Kiba barriers. I've been calling them Kima barriers for fucking week. Let's move on to the attack. So we're done with the defenders. Those are my tips for the defenders. Let's go to attack. We'll start off with my main man, Sledge, here. As Sledge, really, ideally, break as much shit as you can. Open up the castles. Open up floors above site. Any soft hatches that are left, like, open them all up. Open up as much stuff. Add pressure by opening stuff and breaking stuff. At higher ranks, when you're applying, like, vertical pressure, try to open up all the holes before you peek the holes. That way, if you do get, like, smoked through the floor or nitroed or whatever... Uh, your teammates can still come back to the holes and they're already made for them. For Thatcher, wait, what does this guy do again, bro? What does he do again? This guy's been banned for fucking eternity. I, I don't even remember the last time I played Thatcher. Stop banning Thatcher. That's my tip for Thatcher. Stop banning him, please. And then uh, if he isn't banned, pretty straightforward up. Just throw your, throw your EMPs at the wall. If you want an actual tip, maybe just wait for your hard breacher. Like, time your EMPs with your hard breacher. My tip for Ash is don't play Ash. But if you are going to, use your utility. I'm pretty sure the only people that play Ash are the people that hate using utility in Rainbow Six. And then the Ash players never use their freaking Ash launchers. Like, use your breach charges, dude. Just use your breach charges. That's all I'm asking. If you're going to play Ash, which you shouldn't, use your breach charges. Avoid Thermite. Uh, you can Thermite the sides of walls that are muted to open up the walls. If there are two panels and there's only one mute in the middle, you can Thermite literally the, the edge of the wall. If you look up as far as you can to, like, the top right, start aiming down while holding your gadget button you'll eventually place your gadget and as high as you can, basically. And then that way, uh, you'll avoid the mute jammer because it's a sphere. Uh, he's also super, super strong on Clubhouse. Probably the best hard breacher for Clubhouse because you can repel to avoid mute jammers. Opening up the outer CC wall is really good. The con wall is really good. You can open up beside the kitchen hatch to open the kitchen hatch. If it's, if it's like catered or whatever, you can throw it the floor and it'll open it. 
uh, dirt. But Thermite makes the biggest holes. Super, super good on club. My tip for Twitch would be try to get as many default cams as you can. Defaults help defenders know where attackers aren't coming from. They know what's clear. It helps them rotate a lot easier. So getting all the default cams leaves the defenders like, they're everywhere. Like, where are they going to push from? Um, that way you can rotate late. It helps. It just helps a lot by getting default cams, just clearing them. And we got Montang. I mean, uh, a lot of people don't like Montang. I don't think he's terrible. Uh, my tip for him would be just don't over push. Uh, a lot of time you can over push and, and get caught off by yourself. And then defenders can just team up in you and absolutely smoke you. Don't over push. Just try to stay alive. Don't get trapped in bad spots. You can also block off doorways. And then defenders can't rotate through the doorway uh, without killing you somehow. Which would require them shooting in the back. So blocking off doorways can be really strong. But yeah, play slow. Try to play with your team. Usually you'll be the last one standing if you're a good Monty main. In a 1v5, then you're going to get absolutely slaughtered and you'll be smoked. But as Glass, um, a lot of people don't play Glass. Uh, Glass is, is not in a great spot right now. You know, I think we might see him a bit more in competitive with repick and stuff. But uh, as Glass, you really want to, first off, run smokes. But you want to use your smokes to gain control of important stuff. If you smoke off an area, rather than just staring through the smoke, hoping someone swings, try to actually push into your smoke grenade. Like, get inside of your smoke grenade and spin in a circle looking for banana people and use that smoke grenade to gain that control. So use the smoke grenade, push into it, gain the control. Don't, don't smoke and sit and wait. Smoke, push into the smoke, use the smoke to kill people that can't see you, basically. You can see people that can't see you. That's the idea of it. Okay, as fuse, you can fuse like windows and reinforce walls uh, early in the round just to clear utility on site. Super straightforward. Uh, I like to fuse the gen wall in Oregon. So I repel up, fuse it. You know, I get whatever Cade, Bandit, Mutes. Anything on the wall will go. We'll get rid of instantly. It also clear like maybe I'll kill somebody top white on cameras. I don't know. Um, so early fuse charges can clear utility pretty simply. Got to worry about getting shot through the barricade while you do it. That's about it. But yeah, it'll clear traps, wall denial, maybe even people. All right, here's my boy Blitz. I just want to say that I am a big fan of Blitz. I love Blitz. Blitz is really good against aggressive teams, aggressive players. You can hunt down roamers with the help of a drone or like a Dokubi call. Getting a little bit of info with him is good because you don't want to get shot in the back of the head, obviously. Uh, but he makes for really fast, really easy clears, to be honest. Sprint around the map. Crouch when you see somebody. You want to crouch so you don't get your legs blown off. And then if they empty their whole mag on you trying to kill you while you're crouched, you just ADS them like when they're out of ammo. You, you ADS, you shoot them in the back of the head. They can't do anything. Or... You run at them while they're reloading, so you can sprint. They can't shoot your ankles because they're reloading. You flash them. You absolutely murk them. My tip for IQ, because I, I am really an IQ hater. Only play IQ when Valk is being run, dude. You don't need IQ. You just don't need her. If you're picking IQ for the G8, like, literally just don't. Literally just stop. Play an op with better utility. Like, utility is going to be what makes you better at the game. I promise you. So, just try to pick ops with better utility. Unless, of course, Valk. Valk is the one situation I'm like, sure, run, run IQ. If you're getting Valk. If, if Valk is messing you up, then run IQ. Buckaroo, Canadian brethren. Tip for Buck would be go into custom games and open up every floor and every roof on every site. Everything that you can open up at a floor or a roof, open it up if you want to get good at Buck. Go do that. Learn where all the common spots are people sit. And then just abuse that because you should know if I'm under uh, cash on Clubhouse, if I'm under cash, say it's cash ECV, I know that the green box is right on this floor tile. So I can buck behind it and just kill a guy that's sitting in a default spot. Or I can buck right um, right on the radio spot, which is like in the window in CC where a lot of people sit on that little tuck. You know, So learning these spots is super, super important if you want to be good with buck. And that's my tip. Bob the Bob the Blackbeard. This might be a controversial one, but I would say don't hold angles with Blackbeard. Like, get in the building and swing people with him, dude. Being swung on as BB is sketchy, and you'll probably lose the gunfight pretty often, especially if you're on, like, a rappel, um, because people will just see... Like, if somebody swings you while you're on the rappel, they'll see the edge of your shield, pre-fire before you can even see them, and you'll literally just be dead before you can even get a chance to shoot back. So I would say enter the building, take gunfights and just swing people like just try to fight people like blackbeard is good if you have good aim but if your aim is absolutely atrocious probably don't play blackbeard because you'll probably just get beamed before you can even land a shot on anybody's head okay for capital capital capito use your flames side by side for maximum damage if you know where somebody is and you flame two flames that person is gonna have two options sit there in the flame and die or sprint away from the flame and survive, potentially. What you can do is shoot the flames, instantly swap to your gun, 
and they will still be sprinting away from the flames when you have your gun out, and you'll be able to kill them before they can escape. This is Habana. Habana is, in my opinion, the best hard breacher. Don't be afraid to, like, waste pellets. So if you're just putting two pellets in a reinforced wall because you just want to, just do it. Think about this from a defender's perspective. If you're sitting on the church wall on Clubhouse, like the basement wall, and Habana just shoots two pellets, like four, so eight pellets, two, 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 right? And now there's just fucking holes in the whole church wall. I can't sit here because I'll get shot in the asshole. You see what I'm saying? So like you can use the pellets just to make lines inside. You don't always have to make like six by six by six, six by six hole. Yeah, you don't have to do that. You can use them for line of sight. They're great. Uh, she's also the best for getting hatches, of course. So four pellets on a hatch. Uh, this one's kind of weird. Like Jack is pretty straightforward. You scan feet. But I'm, my tip is uh, take your scanner off when you're not tracking people. Because what I'll see a lot of the time is people just walking around with the scanner on nonstop. And then they get in a gunfight and they get a single bullet landed on them and their whole screen goes blurry and they can't see anything and they're literally just shooting at a wall because they can't see where the guy is because their whole screen's blurry because they have their jackal scanner on. So take it off either when you've used all the scans or when you're not using it. Just take it off, you know? Just take it off. It's not that hard. You just beep, beep, beep. Good to go. Oh, that's also a good one. Yeah, you can... Um, let's go back to jackal. Another good one. You can scan people from the floor above by shooting a hole in the floor or a hatch. Um, but yeah, you can scan people through the floor, which is also good. Ying's so fun. Like, honestly, I think Ying is just underutilized in lower ranks, especially. So as Ying, ideally what you want to do is use your smokes to block off one line of sight and use your candelas to push another area. So you use your smokes to block off the line of sight, use the candela, push off the candelas. You don't fucking throw the candelas and sit outside and hope that they swing you. No, you jump in because their whole screen is white and they have no clue what's going on and you take the control. You might get a kill. You might get two kills. You might get three kills. What you're really wanting is the control. So you use the candelas to take control. Don't just use them. Don't just toss them. Don't just... No. Gain the control off of the candelas, okay? As Zoe, use your stuns to burn. Use your impacts to clear utility. So Zoe is a self-sufficient utility clearer because she can use those stuns to burn ADSs or Romitis, and then use your impacts to clear Bulletproof, Shield, Lucy, whatever it is that the utility is protecting. Now, the other thing you could do with the stuns is if you're not using them to clear, they are super, super, super good on an execute. So if your teammate is going for a plant and you use your stuns, it's super loud, so the defenders cannot hear that the bomb is being planted. And at the same time, they're concussed. It's just going to give you an advantage in the gunfight if they do try to stop the plant, but her stuns are really, really good on executes as well. Biggest thing for Doak, a lot of people uh, miss this one, is hack the cameras. It should be priority number one to hunt down a roamer, kill that roamer, and hack his phone. Because cameras are brutally strong once you hack into them. All the site cams, uh, if they have a maestro especially, super nasty, or a Valk, uh, or bulletproofs on site, you can see all of site, you know? Like, these, these cams are strong. These cams are strong. They have to either shoot all their information. So not only are you gaining all the information... Um, but the defenders are losing all the information because they have to clear their own utility for you. So, Doak, honestly, pretty underrated. Pretty underrated. If you are a Lion player and you want a tip for Lion, try to get sneaky drones and capitalize off of poorly positioned defenders using the Lion scan. So what this means is you want to hide a drone somewhere in an important spot, like usually like a flank or something. Um, hide the drone so that First of all, the defenders don't see it, so they don't know that you know that they're there. You see them in a bad spot, like they're pushing up a hallway and they're in the middle of the open. You get off your drone, you call the scan, you shoot them in the face. You know exactly where they are. They don't know where you are. Very, very easy way to get kills with Lion. <laughs> Dude, Finca is so broken, man. Uh, as Finca, pretty straightforward. I mean, you're just hitting a button and everybody's getting a boost. Um, but healing up teammates when you see that they've lost health is really just the biggest thing. Um, it's simple. But just use your ability. Yeah, don't try to, like, save her ability for specific things. Like, just use it as soon as you see someone's lost health. Chances are pretty good that you might not even get through all three in a round. So just use your ability when you when you can. Really, really important. Just learn to map trick properly, as in making the wall soft. Go watch my map guide on YouTube if you want to learn how to do that. But stop wasting nades. Stop wasting your nades to clear utility out the wall. It's, it's a waste of not only nades, but hard breach utility. Like rather than making a hole, wasting a nade, maybe having to burn for an ADS even, and then to clean the stuff and then opening the wall, just make it soft. It's literally takes the same amount of time, but you're saving a nade, you're saving other hard breach utility. And um, there is a safe way to do it. There is a good way to do it. You just have to learn what the good way is. And it'll just 
heighten your skill gap. It'll just make you better. As Nomad, my tip would be to place air jabs like a couple feet above the doorway. Take the doorway, place it a little higher. That way, uh, defenders can't impact them. So if you put it on the side, uh, they can just impact them off when they run out or whatever. Um, so putting it above the doorway is really good. It's a good way to stop that. Gridlock, probably just like the more inferior flank watch to Nomad. The sip's kind of weird, but you can save like a gridlock for the plant because they are very, very loud when they deploy. So you can use the gridlock during a plant to cover the sound of it, which is really strong. Other than that, you probably want to sit near your actual gridlocks because it's very easy to just shoot them and flank as a defender, which is with Nomad, it's a lot harder to shoot them, right? I actually really like Nock. I just think that she's not played very well by a lot of people. My big tip for Nock would be timing is everything with Nock. Timing is so important. You want to hit the back while the shit is going down. While your team is, say, pushing into sight or just causing a ruckus on one side. That's when you want to fly. You don't want to try to rush with knock and sneak past the default camera first 20 seconds, just get shot in the side of the head because you're not droning properly and the defenders have nothing else to worry about. You want to make sure the defenders are focused on something else and that's when you want to hit the back. That's when you want to sneak past the cams with, with a guy, with a dead guy watching them saying, hi, I got your square cam. Like, don't worry about square. And then somebody comes from square and shoots them back. Like, dude, I thought I, there's, it's fucking knock. That's how you want to play knock. You want people to be like, God damn it, they have a knock. Nobody knows how to play Amaru. Honestly, same tip as knock. Timing is everything. Stop rushing with Amaru. Plan out a route to take later in the round or set up to come up a hatch while your team pushes into sight. Come flying in the backside window at the end of a round, not the very start. The rush is predictable. It's not ideal. If you go one for one on a rush, really, you're just hurting your team because you're not clearing any utility. So you're then playing four on four against five people's utility. Um, so it's not great. It's not great. But if you want to learn how to play Amaru the best way, videos on YouTube. Or just go flying straight in the site and die. Amaru brains hurt my brain. Amaru mains hurt my brain. Amaru brains don't exist. <laughs> my tip for Cali would be like, get active. Get active a little bit. Get active with your team. You don't want to always be sitting back holding these long ass angles with your sniper while your team pushes in and gets absolutely slaughtered. You want to be pulling out that secondary, which is nasty by the way, pushing into sight with your boys, getting their trade, helping them out and gaining control, okay? I see a lot of passivity with Cali players. You know, if you got to go in and quick scope some dudes, go do it, man. But like sitting out on ruins for two and a half minutes is getting you nowhere. I promise you, in a 1v4 on ruins, if you keep fucking sitting on ruins, you will not win. I don't care. This is why you're gold with a 1.8 KD and can't hit platinum, man. Stop baiting. Unless you're going to hit a 360 no scope from ruins, then then it's okay. Here's Yana. Yana is so good. Yana is so good. Um, really, the biggest thing for Yana is just clones. Use your clones. Keep cloning. Keep getting info um use your prep phase drone to get into the building like try to get a pre-placed drone into the building off prep phase because realistically as yana you have like six drones because you get probably about four clones five clones in a round just keep using her clones that's how you're going to gather most of your info with yana uh her clones move faster than drones so you can clear stuff quicker with them and overall she's just nasty okay it's ace tip time ace is best for ranged breach whereas thermite is better for making not ranged holes because they're bigger so take the CC plat, for example, making an ace hole there is not as good as making a thermite hole there. So ideally you're thermiting that outside wall and then you're using ace for the range breach where you can ace the rafters wall. So by acing the rafters wall, you're opening up a wall inside the site where thermite, there's no way thermite's walking in and thermiting the rafters wall, but acing that rafters wall then gives you a line of sight into rafters and there's nowhere safe they can play anymore in rafters. This is clubhouse, of course. Same thing on the gym bed site, uh, gym bedroom site. You thermite open the outer wall, but ace is going to be way better for opening that bathroom wall. But having a big thermite breach that you don't have to crouch into or vault through is going to be way more ideal than these tiny little ace holes. Zero is great for clearing stuff super fast by using his cams aggressively. I walk into the lobby of bank, I shoot one into the, the top floor office, I shoot one into the elevator hall, I shoot one into lobby, and I shoot one into tellers and archives, and I swip, swap through all of them. If anyone get any one of them gets shot, I know there's a guy there, right? If the elevator one gets shot, oh, there's a guy elevator hall. 
Um, if none of them get shot, I look through them all, I see there's no defenders, and I take lobby. It's so easy to get control with zero using his cams like that. But that would be my tip for him. For Flores, really what you want to do is use the first half of the round to clear as much shit as you can with his drones. Like the first minute and a half, you'll be walking around the map using your drones, clearing shields, clearing bulletproofs, clearing ADSs, clearing Malusis, clearing traps, clearing whatever. Blow them up. If you blow them up, you blow them up. And then the second half of the round, you're looking for openings using your regular drones or helping your teams in other aspects. So you're using your flashbangs to help your team. Uh, you're droning it out and seeing that like, oh, now they don't have the shield here. There's no defender playing here. I can walk up the stairs. I can take this, whatever, blah, 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 blah. For Osa, this was a tough one. Osa, I would, I would say like place your shields further back to make it harder for defenders to impact. Like try not to be as much up in your face with osa like the farther back you can get the longer angle you can get with your shield usually the better um she's good on some windows but not all of them so you don't want to just be like i'm osa i'm going on the window not all the time you really want to just prioritize windows that have good lines of sight that get good crosses into the site sometimes it's better to just enter the building with your team and use the shields to actually support them rather than just sitting on a rappel right <sighs> i'm tired 